I'm scoring 60 to 70 in mocks, but quant section isn't improving at all. How to increase the marks in quant? What should be my next step? 60 to 70 is a good place to start with. Right? So on chances are the exam is slightly easier than all the mocks you have done. If quant is not improving, but is at the 20, 25 marks level, that's good. That's a good good level to be at. But if it's a 10, 12, then you need to reprioritize. So as a rule of thumb, if you're at the 12, 15 marks level in quant, there are two ways to get to 15 marks. And so attempt 12 questions, get five wrong. Right? So that is 7 into 3, 21, minus 5, 16, assuming all five are negative mark questions. Right? Another way of getting 15, 16 mark, attempt five questions, get everything right. The lever you have to crank, especially in quant, is accuracy. We often get sucked into questions, do them halfway, and then like that famous meme, I love this meme, it says look, there are four answer choices, 90, 94, 97, 99, and I've got 32 as the answer. I mark the closest one. Like that, we get drawn into marking that answer, and don't do that. Don't fall into that trap. So amp up your accuracy. The route to going from 15 to 22 questions, you should say, look, instead of five questions, I'm attempting eight. Very often I find students saying, I usually attempt 12 questions, I get five wrong, I will try to attempt 14, so that even if I get five wrong, my score will be good, wrong. It's completely warped. You have to say, I'm attempting 12 questions, that's worth 36, I'm getting 15, my whole approach is wrong. I'll not attempt 12, I'll attempt only eight, get all eight right. Then your time per question expands. The, you have more peace of mind while attempting that question with the level of clarity. So dial down the attempts to the extent where you plan for 100% accuracy. You do it in a couple of mocks, it will fall in place. You get 8 out of 8 right in one mock. And then you finish this mock in 35 minutes. You're twiddling your thumbs for the last 5 minutes in quant. Then you will feel like, look, this is doable. I've always been attempting 13, 14 questions and getting lesser mark than this 24 that I've got today. So I'm going to change my strategy. From 8, I'll go to 10 and I'm in a rock star score. So very likely that your accuracy is out of whack, not your attempts. So analyze with that in mind. Uh, reading very slow is disturbing the flow and I forget what the first paragraph was about by the time I reach the last paragraph of the passage and often reread sentences. Is there any way I can avoid this without missing out on comprehension of the passage? This is the problem. This is the, the, the reading habit is not there. When you're reading so consciously that you have to read time and move to the next thing. You do forget. I would still recommend don't try to amp up your speed out of whack. Half reading a passage or 70% reading a passage will is almost like a zero move. So even if it takes more time, you have to reread a sentence, grasp that paragraph before going to the next one. That is still time well spent. So don't read fast just because your notional speed metric is slow. That kills your score. So if it takes you one more, I've had several times where I have to read a sentence one more, two more times. You have to just get it. And so, I, and if I struggle like that and I have to read it again, I've often skipped it and gone to the next thing and come back to pay the price. So reading till you understand, till you grasp the crux of it. If it's an odd word that you don't get, you, you gloss over and go, that's fine. But don't amp up your speed and, and sacrifice detail and, and understanding and comprehension in that process. So if you, you, you have to read one more time to just grab the crux of it, spend that time reading, don't amp up your speed. If you're a slow reader, it's not a big deal, not a concern. Uh, in RC, a very slow reader, you can say, look, I'll do two passages, eight questions, maybe get five of them right. And then of the remaining seven, eight questions, I'll attempt three, four, maybe get all of them right. Then you're looking at a score of 24, 25. It's an excellent mark, which will take you places. So don't look to answer every question. Don't look to read all passages, but read the ones that you do rather well. Uh, in VRC, I'm getting stuck with last two options and that is affecting my accuracy. And I'm going to go to the second part a little later on. Uh, for this, I, I had this problem for a long time and I always used to say, I've narrowed it to down between B and C, between C and A. After this, I just am taking a guess. I'll punt on B, I'll punt on C. A part of my brain used to shut down after I narrowed it down to two options. And the selecting between the last two is just a toss of a coin. Okay, this time I'm going for B. This time I'm going for A. That's what I'm telling myself. So when you're doing this, especially in your mock exam, tell yourself that I'm not punting. I'm going to look at these two choices one more time. Look for a ground to eliminate one. There is only one correct answer. This is not randomness. This is not luck. This is not probabilistic. This is not head or tail. 
there is a reason why a is correct and there is a reason why c is being eliminated i am going to spend another half a minute trying to find that reason do that for five passages your ability to look for a why these two both look close how what grounds can i eliminate one that starts improving a little bit there is still an element of i won't call it luck but but subjectivity in this uh, which i won't call it luck because i know that my error rate and the error rate of guys who are really good in verbal are steps apart but some of the guys who i know who have been my students they attempt four passages 16 questions they'll definitely get 13 right they, they their question is either 13 14 15 or 16 whereas i am at 10 to 13 i am never going to get 16 right i am in the 10 to 13 range so they have a knack of figuring and resolving those one and twos better than i do so it's not luck but you have to first believe that there is a mechanism to resolve that and then look at solutions and you keep improving that mechanism don't say it's completely reliant on on, on, on luck right? in lrdi i am not able to go beyond one or 1.5 sets in my mocks how do i do this the number one trick number one thing that you need to nail down and chase in lrdi is set selection you need to make sure that you are not uh, getting drawn into the wrong set super important we should say look i'm going to get to look look to get one thing in the bag four questions in the bag then with that confidence to go to one more but one 1.5 consistently is not a nightmare situation why i'm telling you if you get six questions right it's 18 marks usually at least in the last 2 3 years 18 marks in lrdi is upwards of 90th percentile it is not as bad as nightmare issues we think it is we think of the four sets are there i barely saw one how am i going to even compete one six question set all right at 90th percentile or way beyond 90th percentile so the lrdi section is tough it's important to keep that in mind so it is it is the toughest thing in that pack so six questions right you're on a decent score not a rock star score there are going to be guys who score 17 questions right even in lrdi but forget those people they they, they bother us we get six questions all right that's a very good score so don't don't keep that in mind while you're thinking about lrdi and analyzing lrdi